Hi everybody, hope you're all well. Sorry it's been a while, events and what have you. Another uh, random fix video. This is an iRobot charger. It is for a automatic vacuum cleaner. I've never seen one of those before. And it outputs 22 volts DC at 0.6 amps. Apparently the symptoms of this are, oh, let me plug it in, nothing happens. Let's see, oh, let's plug it in here. Something didn't like that at all, did it? Right, we meter to DC volts, check the output, and it's going to be nothing on the output, we'll just be short. Nothing. We're in luck. Okay. So we've got the top off, and as anticipated, it is a switch mode power supply. Um, so let's just go for, oh, it's still plugged in as well, so I'm going to unplug it, because <laughs> that is not a very clever thing to do. And a normal caveat supply that even when these are unplugged they can still hold a fairly lethal amount of voltage you can see here these two caps have got 400 volts written on them and the reason for that is that they are the um, caps which reservoir the, the um, rectified AC that then goes through this chopping transistor I'll quickly spin over my understanding of how I think this works Power comes in, you've got a fuse, you've got a um, safety capacitor or a um, suppression capacitor. Common mode choke, so this is all filtering. Uh, and then you've got the bridge rectifier, which in this case is made of four diodes. And then you've got two, uh, I think this is two in parallel capacitors. So power comes in, gets filtered, gets rectified, sits in these caps. And then it's chopped through this transformer by this transistor, controlled by can't see there might be something underneath like a switch mode chip so it comes out of this gets rectified sits in this cap and then it goes out to where it's needed um, these are probably to do with the feedback so that's probably a TL431 which is a voltage reference which sends um, information back via this optocoupler to the switch mode chip telling it well no there's not enough voltage or there's too much voltage now what normally fails in these is either the diode on the output one of the caps or the main switching transistor. So let's first of all decharge it and then see what, what's going on here. Let's just check these caps, have got no voltage on them. Don't touch the underside of the board, holding the plastic only. Turn it over, put my meter on. 600 volts. And I'll just check the caps here. Nothing, nothing. But just to be sure, applies with an insulated handle. You might see a big whack of power if you do that and there is a charge on there, it will snap. But there's no power on there. Let's go to continuity mode. That's the fuse, I bet that's gone. Ah, no. The fuse hasn't gone. Okay, the fuse hasn't gone. Let's check the output diode here, which is this guy here. And the output diode has gone. The diode is bridged. What you should see there is it should go one way and not the other. That clearly isn't the case here because it's bridged. It's basically the diode's got <coughs> the diode's gone short. And that will also, it could be the diode, but it could be also this capacitor. So either the diode's gone short on the output or the capacitor has. So let's see which it is. So what I'm going to do now is just take this cap off. No, the cap is not short. That's just the charge of the cap. So the diode's still short. Let's take the diode off. Right, so you can see marked on the board. That's the line there. This is the diode here. Let's just check whether the diode shorted. Indeed it is. Let's just check whether the capacitor's absolute crap. Yeah. So that's not bad, 521 mic, 0.02 ohms, should be 560. That can go back on. Done. Uh, this is the diode that come out of it, the failed one. 31 DQ10, it's a 3.3 amp, 100 volt, shocky diode basically. 
Uh, it doesn't say anything about being a fast acting rectifier diode or anything like that, it's just a Schottky diode. So I've gone through my parts bin and found one of these, this is an SR5200, and all I've done is put the key characteristics next to each other, see if I think it's okay or not. So forward current, 5 amps on average, versus 3.3, so tick. Uh, blocking voltage, average uh, reverse voltage it will take. This would take 200, this would take 100, so tick. Forward uh, current, surge current. This is if it, it surges, some calculation they do. 210, 120, well, okay, in a pinch. Forward voltage drop, 0 0.9, 0.85, exactly more or less bang on. Junction temperature, pretty match up. Junction capacitance, a bit different. So I think on balance, that's going to be a suitable replacement. What I'll do is I'll whack it in. If they want to change it for the exact part, they can. I'll get this guy in here. It's a big old ground plane, that's why it's playing up. There we go, that's better. got an LED on a stick that you have to line exactly up to go in that hole but you can't see what you're doing when you're putting the thing together. But anyway, there we go. One, or well, another switch mode power supply fixed. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Take care. Bye.